Hello, this is Rodrigo from Frame Freak Studio, and this is the Ask Frame Freak Show. And today's question is, how do you deal with the emotional side and logical side on the art industry? So, this is something that I've been talking lately to the people who are in art and who know me, because I've seen this problem happening a lot. There is something that people are not dividing very well, which is that artists tend to be really emotional. And yeah, to, to create art is an emotional process. You don't go thinking like a mathematician and, and, and think and doing art like. Uh, but at the same time, you need to be able to recognize that if you want to do it through hobby, like if you want your art to be a hobby, or if you want it to be a profession, a business, a career, if you want to get money out of it. Now, the thing that I see, this is the, what I feel that every artist in the world is struggling, is that they are not understanding first the context. So, if you want to do art, just to do a hobby, just to uh, be happy and free your emotions and, and take, take it as your way of relaxing or take it the stress away or whatever, then ignore this video completely. Go to your art. Uh, don't pay attention to what I'm about to say. But, but if you want to do a profession out of art, if you want to get money out of art, if you want to go and build a business, a career, if you want to be hired into a studio, whatever, uh, that take anything that takes taking your art and making money out of it, you have to enter a complete different world. And this is the world that not many people are entering. Like they are trying to get all these emotional things, all this ego, all this uh, pride, you could say, on how they do the things and how this is their art. And, and they want to be like very egotistical. And then when they want to get money out of it. Now you need to understand that this is not the time of Andy Warhol. Simple as that, like this guy, Jackson Pollock, uh, uh, this guy, Andy Warhol, that they were acting all the divas, like, uh, and all the people were sucking their dicks about it and pretty much uh, just idolizing them. This is not today's world. Like, not even New York today is what it was, like, all these years behind in the 70s or whatever. So you need to understand that. Like you need to, to really put it through your head. Like technology, uh, the economy, everything has been disrupted. Like innovation has been disrupting everything that we have about it. Like we have now mus musical.alive where the artists are putting all their, their music or SoundCloud. We have YouTube uh, for people who are creating their own films. We have all these tools now, and we and, and on one side we have the practical and the logistical side uh, handled through us. Like it is really easy. Like, the, if, can you imagine how much time will have taken my parents to do what I did with the interviews in this show? Like the the logistics of buying the plane when in a time where it was so much expensive. Uh, buying the, the camera equipment like this, what we are doing here will have costed like at least $50,000 uh, back in 30 years ago uh, or 40 years ago. So this, what we are doing, uh, this video, this microphone, this camera, uh, this laptop and, and putting it to YouTube to distribute it to all the groups. And, and we have like a reach of 400 people, like reaching 400 people, 40 years ago was fucking hard. So the logistics are here for you. But the thing is that everybody is, is, is still trying to think like they are Andy Warhol and that the world 
owes them uh, to recognize their art and that people should come to you and give you money out of your art, out of the blue, that the, your family, your friends should support you. And that's not true. I'm sorry, that's not true. Like, you can be a nonprofit, you can be an ad agency, you can be a painter, you can be a singer, whatever. We all have to learn about marketing, about business, about how our industry is developing right now. What are the needs of the people that you want uh, that you want to reach? If you want clients to buy to be buying your art, you can do that through Patreon. You can do that through Etsy. But at the same time, you have to go through the clients and see what can you. Uh, which is the audience that you can tap on that connects better with your art and then produce this type of art that connects with this type of audience and go out. And this is something I've seen a, a, a many very small artists do. Like they start doing a lot of fan art, uh, taking serious that people love, th taking things that people love. They start doing doujinshis, they start doing like a lot of fan art. Uh, and, and eventually they create their own fan base. And little by little they start uh, leaking out their own original work. And then by the time they, they start doing that, they already have an audience that they love what these people do. And you can look through that in Casey Neistat. You can look through that in Chase Jarvis. You can look through that with this artist, this comic artist in Debian Art called Bleedman. Uh, there is a lot of people who have gone very smart about this, but at the same time, there is a whole lot of people who have an amazing talent, who are just too trapped and, and in pride, in ego, in this is my way, this is how I want to win, and they don't want to recognize that all this has changed. So if you want to get to money, you need to go practical. So yeah, sure, art, it, the, what you do is art, what you do is very emotional and whatever. So. What my advice will be like, put all your emotions into the creating this art that you have. Put everything into it, like make it a masterpiece. Every work that you do, make sure that you put everything in yourself into this. But as soon as you finish your piece of art and you need to start moving the logistic to take this piece of art and distribute it in the internet to a thousand people, then you, this is where you shot your emotions, this is where you shot your pride, this is where you shot your ego, this is where you put yourself completely in the logical mode and start thinking, okay, which uh, social media works best for me? How much times do I have to post? Uh, which time of the day are they res uh, responding the best? Uh, do I get more likes or shares in the morning or in the night? or in the evening? Uh, do I get more likes and shares in Wednesday or in Monday or in Friday? Uh, try to start measuring these things. Try to start finding out what works best for you and for your audience and start getting all this data because it's there, like the logistics to get all this information is there and you can go like one by one. Uh, every fan that you get, you get like, thank you for liking my page. Uh, just want, just wanted to check in, how are you, uh, what type of work you, would you like to see more? And you will start getting all this feedback, little by little, little by little. Some of you haven't answered my questions, but I have been through many of the group and asking like, uh, hello, I'm Rodrigo, I'm from this group, I wanted to see uh, what things do you want to see the most? And I mean, one by one, one by one, and it's not elegant, and it's not fancy, but it's the work that needs to be done. And there, there will be some time, of course, that when you put it there, out there, your work and your passion, out there, there will be some haters, there will be people who, who don't relate to this, and they will be offended because they don't relate to this. You diss them out and focus on the people who love you. Simple as that, like start focusing on the people who love you, all the people who don't support you, like start getting them out of your social media. Try to get, uh, don't try to get fixed in the numbers game as well. Don't try to get like a thousand likes, like trying to invite all the people uh, uh, that you know into liking your fan page. 
because not all the people that you know probably are going to care about what you're doing. They are just going to give you one like and never going to see your work again. Try to get quality likes. Try to get quality subscribers. Try to get uh, quality followers, people who actually love what you do. And I actually recommend that you look for this post from Kevin Kelly called 1000 True Fans, which is about how artists can pretty much stay well, uh, monetarily speaking, if they actually get to get 1,000 true fans. I'm not talking about 1,000 likes in your fan page. I'm talking about 1,000 people who actually truly love what you do. And this is what you have to do, and this is the best time to do it. And you have a Snapchat, you have Instagram, you have Pinterest, you have uh, Tumblr, you have YouTube, you have Facebook to do it. And you can do it very easily if you just leave your pride and leave your ego for a moment and just think logically. Just focus on the process, just focus on the strategy. And if you cannot do this, if this is something that is very, very hard for you to do, to shut your emotions down, uh, uh, then get somebody else to do it for you. Like, join with somebody and, and who has the same vision and, hey, let's do this shit together. Uh, we'll get 50-50. You think on the strategy and distribution, uh, I will do the art. And we'll get 50-50 or get an agent or whatever. Get somebody who can do it for you if you cannot do it for yourself. But do not leave the logical, the practical and the logistic side out just because you want to feel like Andy Warhol uh, acting like a diva through your art. So this is pretty much how to deal with it. So if you like this piece of advice, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our fan page. Until next time.